Hello everyone, welcome to Shorthand Battle. I am Divya and I am going to dictate you a legal passage of approx 600 words at the speed of 120 words per minute. So get ready for the dictation. 3, 2, 1 and go. Similarly, testimony of PW3 relates to the fact that he saw the deceased along with the accused persons moving on rickshaw towards Khas Bagh around 6.45 pm on 30th October 2002. This testimony, if taken to be true in itself, does not establish the fact that all the three persons arrived at Khas Bagh. Therefore, testimony of aforesaid witnesses of fact on particular aspects is not consistent with the establishment of the guilt and it gives rise to certain other possibilities. It is admitted position that no one saw the accused persons either coming into the Khas Bagh or moving out of the Khas Bagh at any relevant point of time during night before discovery of dead body of Ravi Shukla. Therefore, various links of the chain in this case necessary for giving consistency to the guilt of the accused persons are found to be missing and due to which we can unambiguously observe that the prosecution has not been successful in establishing the vital links in the chain of circumstances which, if established, would have conclusively pointed towards guilt of the accused that they and they alone are the author and perpetrator of the offence to the exclusion of the entire world. It is cardinal principle of criminal jurisprudence that in cases based on circumstantial evidence each and every hypothesis of innocence of the accused should be removed and chain of circumstances should be consistently intertwined so as to point out guilt of the accused conclusively that it was the accused and accused alone who committed the crime to the exclusion of others. In this case, analysis made herein above goes to evince legal truth that the prosecution has failed miserably to establish vital links of the chain of circumstances and the chain of circumstances is not complete. We have counted upon various aspects of the case right from the point of motive to the factual aspect of last seen theory and thereafter factum of arrest and recovery made by the investigating officer. It appears that the informant came to know about the dead body of his son the next morning on 31st October 2002 and thereafter he lodged the report but the manner in which the investigating officer allegedly arrested the two accused persons and effected recovery is highly doubtful and the same cannot be believed to have been truly made under the facts and circumstances of this case. Even the investigating officer failed to collect the requisite evidence that may conclusively point out and establishes guilt of the accused and work against hypothesis of innocence of the accused. We may sum up that testimony, facts and circumstances open possibility of commission of murder of Ravi Shukla by other persons as well and every hypothesis of guilt to the exclusion of others against the accused has not been established in the chain of circumstances. The trial court, while recording conviction against the appellants, failed to properly appreciate the facts and circumstances of the case and recorded erroneous and illegal finding of conviction which cannot be sustained by us for reasons aforesaid. Consequently, the contention raised by the learned counsel for the appellants holds the ground firmly and it has got force. The appeal is allowed and judgment and order of the trial court dated 5 March 2005 passed by additional sessions judge court number 2 Rampur in sessions trial number 276 of 2003 arising out of case crime number 582 of 2002 under section 302 slash 34 and 411 IPC is hereby set aside and the accused appellants are 
exonerated of all charges in this case the appellants are in jail they be set free forthwith if not wanted in connection with any other case after complying with the provisions of section 437a crpc let a copy of this order be certified to the concerned trial court for its intimation and follow up action stop